man, not a woman, not a child in this place of worship shall see thy servant. Move upon this paper. I pray that the Holy Spirit shall have perfect liberty in this place. and tongue to tell what we have experienced, what we feel, what we know to be the truth. But a minute, check the sound before our Jimmy sings because I want you to get every word. How many cannot hear in the auditorium say amen? amen. Well, how do you know what I said? up there. I, 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 now they're scared to death to say anything, you know. How many up there? Is it just one section up there? Can you hear now? One person has good hearing up there. I'll have to pray for the rest of them after the service, you know that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I don't care whether they hear me or not. Just so you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, and it's just like that. That's the most important thing. Okay, okay. Well, and you knew Jimmy McDonald would be here. You knew Jimmy would be here. And I'll tell you confidentially, I haven't seen Jimmy yet. I have told Jimmy over and over again. I've, I've said, Jimmy, if I have a heart attack, you're the one who's going to give it to me because you always come on the last plane, or you, Jimmy always does. Now, I, I, I'll tell you something, and you can stake your life on it. When we have the rapture, Jimmy's going to be the last one up. <laughs> There's something about Jimmy, he always takes the last plane, but never worry about him making heaven. He may be just a little late, but he'll make it. Jimmy McDonald. Where are you, Jimmy? Come on, Jimmy, come on. Oh, you're going to go over there. Give him a great big applause. Come on, Jimmy. He's like a river, a town.
Jesus Christ does something for you and he does it real good it stays that way when he comes into your heart and you're moved and energized by the Holy Spirit it makes a big difference somebody asked me some time ago how would I describe being filled by the Holy Spirit and I said you know it's Jesus becoming transistorized, being able to move around without the wires, being able to move around without the exterior entanglements. And you know, when you have Jesus, sometimes you may have to go through the dark waters, but the Bible says, Lo, I'm with you. He says, casting all your cares upon me because I care for you. The songwriter writes it like this. In So rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children. Great. 
Away from the mind And away from the clay God leads His dear children That'll be eternity's day. Hallelujah. God leads his dear children. I don't care where you go. West coast, east coast. I don't care where you are in the world. I don't know whether the man, whether he be a politician or just the businessman or the man on the street. I don't care who the person is. On his lips. And in his mind is the uncertainty of the future. If you really want to know what the future holds, then, my friend, turn to the Word of God. It's all in the Word. We're the place where the world is standing on the threshold of the greatest suffering it has ever known. The Bible speaks of it as not only troubles, but tribulation. Tribulation of the world has never known, no generation has ever known the suffering, the tribulation that's just in the future. It's happening that quickly. Nations are as men on a chessboard. This is the hour when God has described it as having hooks in the jaws of the nation. No greater, really great world ruler on the scene. But if you want to know how the nations are going to shape up for that lost and grand and fatal battle, all you have to do is to read the 38th chapter of the book of the Revelation. It's all there. It is no secret. If some of you reporters want a real scoop, start reading the Bible. generation shall not pass away until all these things be fulfilled. I'm not a seer, I'm not a prophet, a prophetess, but I believe the word of God. And I stake my very life on it. It's dark out there. Straining force that's left in the world today for good is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only restraining power there is. And I don't want to be here one five minutes after the, the Holy Spirit has been taken out. I paid my brethren. I wouldn't want to be here one five minutes after the Holy Ghost has been taken out. He is the only restraining force in this world today. The forces of hell loose. And think what it's going to be like when the Holy Spirit is taken out. When Jesus Christ came to this earth in the form of flesh, he staked everything on this mighty third person of Trinity. I mean everything. Because he knew he would be as much man as though he were not God. He knew he would stand face to face with temptation. He knew the hour would come when he'd stand face to face with the evil one, the devil. And before he went away, the very last thing that he did, he made provision that you and I should not be defeated on a single score. If you're a to this great body of believers, you do not have to go down in deep feet for one split second. I do not have to go down in deep feet for one split second. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus in this great auditorium. Greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's marvelous. But my friend, do you know the experience of having yielded your will to the will of the Father? Some of self and some of thee, but none of self and all of me. I feel that glorious anointing of the Holy Ghost, that provision that He has made for every one of His children. When He'll take the most ordinary. He doesn't ask for golden vessels. He doesn't ask for silver vessels. He asks for yielded vessels. Glory to God. And he'll take the most ordinary person. I don't care who that one might be. He'll give you a wisdom beyond the wisdom of man's understanding. give you a courage. He'll give you power. But you feel you can stand alone, arrayed against all the forces of hell. And you stand there strengthened. And you feel like a giant not to be called of your own strength, but because you are drawing on unseen resources. I haven't been speaking to you about something that's imaginary. I've been speaking to you about something that's the most real thing that can happen to any individual. You wonder why this great coming out among the Catholics, the Protestants, the coming out the non-believers, the coming out from every nation, something is happening, something is happening. I pray that before this great convention is over with, you'll come to the full re revelation that something is happening. Something glorious is happening that all the forces of the hill will not be able to stop it. I don't care what your unbelief may be. I don't care what your theology may be. I want to go on record as saying to you, forces of hell will not stop this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Catherine Coleman never pastored a church. She said that was a man's job. In fact, to the end of her ministry, Miss Coleman felt that God had chosen a man for the work she was doing, but that man had turned God down, so she was chosen instead. I give you praise, I give you praise. It costs much, but it's worth the cost. It costs everything. 
If you really want to know the price, if you really want to know the price, I'll tell you. It'll cost you everything. Catherine Kuhlman died a long time ago. I know the day, I know the hour, I can go to the spot where Catherine Coon died. But you see, for me, it was easy because I had nothing. Wonderful Jesus. I have nothing. I have nothing to give you but my love. That's all that I can give you. And I love you with all my heart. And I give you my body as a living sacrifice. You can take nothing and use it. Then here's nothing. Take it. It isn't silver vessels that he's asking for. It isn't golden vessels that he needs. He just needs yielded vessels. What is over here, Jimmy? Tell him. This man is from Turkey. He had an operation on this knee, which they removed the kneecap, and he was scheduled for another operation, and the Lord has marvelously healed his knee. Five years ago, he had this problem. And, and the kneecap has been the removed? The kneecap was removed. And he was scheduled for another operation. Bend it now, bend it. Is there no pain at all? No pain. And the kneecap has been removed. The man is from Turkey. One kneecap has been removed and he's scheduled for another operation. The Lord had just healed him. When he put a new kneecap in there, I'm not sure. But bend it back. Is that is that the, the, the knee where the kneecap has been removed? Kneel down on it. Kneel down on it right now. Give him a great face. Get up, sir. Come on. Get up. 
get up, get up without any help whatsoever. Turn around and run over there. Go on. Turn around and run. Go on. Go on. Go on. Come on over here. Is there no pain there at all? Is there no discomfort there whatsoever? No discomfort. Bend them all the way back. It's what? The daughter and his wife. Did you believe this was going to happen to your daddy? No. <laughs> you, you mean you didn't believe this could, this could happen to your daddy? How old are you? Fourteen years old. And, and the family is from Turkey, right? Did you think something might happen to your daddy? Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Turn around and tell the people how happy you are. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. You, you just can't talk. Dear Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost just goes through her body. Let her go with the power of God goes through her body. The glory that's on this man. This man is getting something more, I'll tell you. He's getting something. Keep seated. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to explain something to you very, very quickly before I enter into a little hot to hot talk. I want you to know that I have seen literally thousands and thousands slain by the power of the Holy Spirit. And to this very hour, I do not understand the slain power of the Holy Ghost. One thing I do know, and that is that Catherine Pullman has nothing to do with the slain power of the Holy Spirit. Please believe me. There will be those who will plead and say, Oh, touch me, touch me. It is not my touch, it is his touch. Know that. That's one thing I can promise you. There's one thing that I know about the slain power of the Holy Spirit. It is not in my touch. It is not Catherine Kuhlman, it's the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. And the very thing that will happen in this great auditorium, in this building today, happened to Paul not very far from this building. <laughs> I give you praise that the power of the Holy Ghost will go through this body one day. a very short distance from this building one day. What happened to Paul on the road out here? That's exactly what happened to Paul on the road out here. Paul on the road to Damascus. Think of it, this is so wonderful. We give you honor, we give you praise, we give you glory. I know the power of the Holy Ghost is on this. Is there no pain there? Move it up and down. Move it up and down. And as Something happened, something glorious happened. Suddenly he was slain by the power of the Holy Ghost and he found himself prostrate on the ground. Some of you may have walked on the very same spot where the Holy Spirit did say Paul. And I believe in that a moment if any one of us would have come to him and would have said, What happened? on the ground what happened we think he would have gotten up and looked at us and would have said it was wonderful I don't understand what happened I don't know what happened but it was a glorious experience Put, your, put, put, put it up now. Swing that arm now, just as hard as you can. Give her a great big God bless her. In the car wreck, I had a broken back and a broken neck and a broken leg. This, how, long, how long ago was this that? This was in 1968. And what has happened since? And since then, um, I've had extreme pain in my right arm and in my shoulder. And though my neck and my back and my leg got all right, this, all the ligaments were pulled loose from the back of my spine down into my arm. And I lost all the power in this arm to where I have only five pound pressures all the time and was in pain. If you see the dark circles under my eyes from not being able to sleep from pain. That old time power. This is an hour of restoration. 
said, this is not a day of revival. <laughs> He's restoring the fruits and the gifts again. The fruits of... <laughs> Honey, you'll never be able to stand on your feet. But uh, when she pointed up in the balcony for me, <laughs> Jesus healed me in a moment. And, um, and now what? No pain. I'm completely healed. And, and that was two days ago. Two days ago, yes. You're still with no pain. No pain. Whatsoever. No pain. Praise the Lord. Put the me really how to love. When I first came to the meetings in the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, where Ms. Kuhlman conducted her monthly meetings, I really couldn't put my arm around just anyone and really love them. But through her ministry, I found out that it was not just a healing ministry, but a salvation ministry. I want to be born again. I want that glorious new birth experience. word she said love the whole world I just see her yet in her last moment the last words love the whole world and then she says love I thought of these words and I thought when she said love the whole world in her way said I love the whole world and then she turned up and said I love you Jesus and the whole heavenly host in this transition What can a person say in these few moments? A great woman inspired millions of hearts all over the world. Thousands came to Europe, Israel, all over the world to her meetings. Faith has increased all over the world. She had it made it a lot easier for people to be healed because of her dedication and her life. And I think if she would say anything at all, the last word she'd leave us, say to uh, love one another, love Jesus, come to Jesus. And through love, the greatest gift of all, you can have all the gifts, but the greatest gift is love. And love is what she had that drove her to help the human race. Love is what brought Jesus to this world, and love is what you and I need. And there's a great vacuum in this ministry. And I believe you and I and the whole world can pick it from here and begin to turn our hearts and our faith to Jesus in a way and say, Lord, use me, whatever I have, use me. And you stand there with your eyes closed and your heads uplifted, unashamedly, Audibly say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. Come, into my heart. come into my heart, forgive my sins, forgive my sins. Take, me just as I am. take me just as I am. I give myself to you, body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. For Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. And in this moment, 
I pray that in your spirit, the Holy Spirit, shall bear witness with the spirit of every man and every woman in this holy sanctuary that they pass from death unto life. The Holy Spirit, your spirit, softly in the spirit sing it all. Flipping the door and just sing. Having loved 
haunt you with all these many years. We know exactly what our first words will be. Jesus, we tried. We tried. We've done it the best we've known how. 